and welcome to the Study Smarter video, How to Present Like a Pro. I'm Mariel Griffiths. I'm a learning skills advisor with the Study Smarter team in student services here at UWA. In the course of your study here at UWA, your presentation skills become very important as you share your ideas with other students, your lecturers and your tutors, and perhaps with a wider audience. The good news is that with careful planning and preparation and putting into practice the tips we'll show you, you can refine your skills so that you present like a pro. Our three top tips for presenting like a pro are to plan and prepare, present and review your presentation. Before you start researching your topic and preparing your materials, it's important to be clear about what the task requires and to think about the purpose of your presentation and what you want to achieve. So spend some time on planning and preparing. Make sure you know what you're being asked to do and having a clear focus will help you keep on track. So ask yourself some key questions at the start. Tutorials, demonstrations, reports and conference papers are some of the most common types of presentation. All have different objectives and styles. For example, if you're presenting to your tutorial group, your style may be more conversational and interactive than if you're presenting a research paper at a conference. It's also important to be clear about the purpose of your presentation and what you, what you want to achieve. For example, you may be presenting your own research or discussing existing research in your subject area. Or you may be presenting a case for or against a particular approach or theory. Think about what you want your audience to take away with them and the effect you want to have. Do you want to inspire or persuade them, or just to inform them? Next, think about your topic and what you'll be able to cover in the time available to you. It's likely that you'll have to set time limits on how much material you can present, so don't make it too complicated. Having a clear focus for your presentation will help you to define your task and make it manageable. Decide what to include and what not to include in your presentation, as well as the materials or methods you'll use. Take into consideration who you're presenting to. For instance, if there are other students in your tutorial, how much do they know about your topic and how much will you need to explain? Also, make sure you know the venue for your presentation so you can check the layout and audiovisual equipment. If the room's set up in a way that some people won't be able to see you, you may want to configure the room differently for your presentation, so make a note to do that beforehand if possible. Once you know what audiovisual equipment is available, you can decide whether to use it for your presentation and how you can use it most effectively. Once you've made your decisions about what to include and how to present it, you will need to create a structure for your presentation. Having a clear structure will help you keep on track and to time, and it'll help your audience to focus on your key points. If you're using PowerPoint for your presentation, design your slides to be clear and simple. Use a large font, at least 24 point, and don't overload your slides with too much information or lots of graphics and avoid using distracting transitions and animations. Keep to your key points and supporting visuals. The focus should be on you rather than your PowerPoint. So use the slides as visual support. Don't let them steal the show. When you've got your final draft for your presentation, start practicing. You'll need to check your timing. If it's too long, be prepared to cut some material. By the time you do your presentation, you should know your material and have notes with key points to prompt you if you forget something. When you've rehearsed your presentation, you should be ready to present like a true professional. And even if you're feeling nervous, you'll be prepared and well organised, which will give you confidence. On the day of your presentation, there are some things you can do to be prepared. Even if you're feeling nervous, Make sure you eat something so your blood sugar isn't too low. Think about how you dress. Aim to look professional, but make sure you're comfortable and able to move around freely. Get to your venue early to set up. 
This way you can check that you have everything you need with you, such as your USB, your notes and any handouts. How you start your presentation is important. Aim to build a rapport with your audience from the start by introducing yourself and your topic. Your audience will also want to know what you're going to cover and what they can expect, so let them know right at the start. Your presentation skills are like a toolkit. Use your voice, eye contact, facial expressions and body language to keep the audience's attention on your presentation. In the next few minutes, we'll show you how you can make the most of your presentation skills. Let's look at two short video clips from a presentation. Look out for the differences between clip one and two and think about which one works better and why. Is it really hard to be kind? Does kindness mean I have to give something away even when I don't feel like it? Kindness can be defined as a spontaneous gesture of goodwill towards someone or something. It is also known as the quality of being friendly, generous and considerate. The need for kindness. Is it really hard to be kind? Do I have to give away something that is precious to me, even when I don't feel like it? Kindness can be defined as a spontaneous gesture of goodwill towards another. It is also known as the act of being considerate, friendly, and thinking of the next person. Did you notice how the presenter addressed the audience directly in the second video? She looked and sounded more confident. Her voice was more expressive, and she used gestures and facial expression to add emphasis and interest. Using notes well is an important skill. Keep your notes or slides brief and use headings and bullet points to remind you of your main points. Unless you're presenting a conference paper, don't read your presentation or your slides. Aim to address your audience directly. While you may feel like hiding behind the lectern, stand where your audience can see you clearly. Engaging your audience is also important. Making eye contact with everyone in the room will help you to establish a connection with them. If you don't look at them, they may quickly lose interest in what you're saying. If you're trying to remember something, you're likely to look up at the ceiling, down at the floor or straight ahead. So don't try to memorize your presentation word for word. And if you're using PowerPoint, make sure you address your audience, not the slides. Try moving your gaze around the room to include everyone so they'll feel involved in your presentation. Take a look at the next two video clips and decide which one is most effective in building a rapport with the audience. When I was a little girl, I used to have this dream. I think I was maybe six or seven. It was a nightmare, a recurring nightmare. In this dream, in this dream, I was in the middle of an open field. There was a tartan rug on the ground and a vase with flowers in it. And I was sitting on this rug. There wasn't really much else around me. When I was a little girl, I used to have this recurring dream. It was actually a scary nightmare. It used to wake me up in the middle of the night. In this dream, I was in this huge open space, a land but nothing there, except a tartan rug on the ground and a small vase with flowers in it. And I sat on that rug with nothing else around me. Now let's look at how you can use body language to enhance your presentation. Using your hands, facial expression and movement can add interest and emphasis to what you say. On the other hand, you can easily distract your audience if you don't use body language consciously and with purpose. Some examples of distracting habits are playing with your hair or belt, adjusting your clothing and fiddling with your watch or something in your hand. Your audience will read your body language, so aim to project confidence even if you don't feel it. The key to looking confident is your posture. Stand straight with your arms loose by your sides and keep your hands free so you can use them. 
Have a look at the presenter's body language in these two video clips. Make a note of what's effective and what's distracting. Hi, my speech today is about titles three in one. And when I talk about three in one, I'm not talking about instantaneous drink. I'm actually talking about three groups of people, uh, drivers, cyclists and pedestrians. And I'm sure that you belong to one of them. The reason for my speech today is to actually talk about cyclist safety. I want to bring awareness to cyclist safety because the number of cyclists involved in road accidents are actually increasing while the number of people involved in motor vehicle accidents are decreasing. So therefore, it is very important to share and care for your fellow road users. Hi there, my speech today is titled Three in One and I'm not talking about instantaneous drink. I'm actually talking about the three groups of people that I'm sure we're all part of. The first group is drivers, second group is pedestrians, the third group is cyclists. Membership to these three groups are not mutually exclusive and I'm sure you belong to one of them. And when I say three in one, the one refers to the wider and bigger society that we all share and we all live in. Lastly, let's look at how you can use your voice to create interest and keep the audience's attention. Your voice is the most important tool in your toolkit. Aim to speak clearly and audibly so that everyone in the room can hear you and make your voice flexible. One reason for not reading your presentation is that your voice will become flat and monotonous. Try to add variation to your voice by altering your pace as well as your volume and pitch. Raising your voice can emphasize a point, while slowing your pace can focus the audience's attention on what you're saying. Pausing at key points will help your audience and reinforce your words. Listen to how these techniques are used to tell a story in these two video clips. Each speaker varies their pace, volume and pitch to create interest and engage their audience. There was this huge sound and it was rolling towards me. I couldn't get away. It just kept coming and coming and coming. And when it reached me, I woke up. She dropped the ball, which rolled into the pond. She didn't cry, of course, but she made a mental note to be more careful next time. Once you've done your presentation, and hopefully it's gone well, our final top tip is to review it, looking at what worked and what can be improved for your next presentation. Going back over your presentation gives you an opportunity to review your content as well as how you presented it. Try to get feedback from at least one person about your presentation. You could create a questionnaire or get informal feedback on what worked well and anything that detracted from your presentation. Aim to get honest, specific feedback rather than flattery about how great you were. Even the best presenters look for what they can improve. Let's review the three steps again. Plan and prepare, present and review for next time. We hope you found these tips useful. Remember to try them out and put them into practice and your presentations will be more effective, more engaging and more professional. We'd like to thank our presenters from UWA Toastmasters for their participation. To find out more, go to the Study Smarter website at studysmarter.uwa.edu.au.